Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering components of computer, computer languages and what are translators and also I will explain what is memory and various types of memory and what are operating systems and various types of operating system. Guys, I have uploaded complete PPS subject tutorials. I will provide link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain components of computer. We also call these components of computer as functional units of computer. Before that, let me explain what is computer. Com Computer is an electronic device that takes input data from input devices and it stores and processes this data and produce output. For example, if you consider keyboard, keyboard is an input device because by using keyboard we can enter input. So computer is an electronic device that takes input data from input devices like keyboard and then it stores the data and processes the data and produce output. Output is seen in output devices like monitor. We can see output in monitor. So monitor is output device. You need to know difference between data and information. Data is nothing but it is collection of unorganized facts and information mean processed or organized data is known as information. In simple terms data mean unorganized facts and whereas information mean organized data. Components of computer is divided into two categories. One is hardware and next one is software. Hardware is physical parts of computer like CPU, monitor, mouse, keyboard which we can touch is known as hardware. All these are the examples of hardware devices. Next what is software? Software provides instructions to computer that is it tells computer what to do and there are two types of softwares one is system software and next one is application software software which is designed for system is known as system software for example windows xp windows 10 linux all these are examples of system software because the softwares are designed especially for system and software which are designed for users is known as application software for example photoshop ms office all these are examples of application software because the softwares are designed for users for their personal use. Hardware contains system software like Windows 10 and inside system software we can install application softwares like MS Office, Photoshop, so on and these application softwares are accessed by users. System software act as interface between hardware and application software and whereas Application software act as interface between system software and user. Each and every computer follows five basic operations. First one is take input. It is the process of entering data and instructions into computer. I already said before, computer takes input by using input devices like keyboard. And next one is store data. Whatever the data that we entered, this data is stored in our computer so that we can access that data when required and this data is stored either in RAM or hard disk. Third one is processing data. Performing arithmetic and logical operations on data in order to convert this data into useful information is known as processing data. And fourth one is output information. The process of producing useful information or result to user and we can see this output by using output devices like monitor. Fifth one is control the workflow. All above four operations must be done in sequence manner and it is handled by computer. Computer system consists of three components. They are first one is input unit, second one is central processing unit that is CPU and third one is output unit. And the central processing unit contains three components. They are first one is control unit, next one is arithmetic and logical unit and third one is memory unit. This is block diagram for components of computer. We also call this diagram as one human architecture. First one is input unit. This input unit contains input devices such as keyboard, mouse, so on. By using this input devices, we can enter input and this input unit establish connection between user and system. Next one is CPU. CPU is considered as brain of computer because each and every operation is controlled by CPU and all types of data processing operations are handled by CPU. The CPU itself contains three components. On that first one is control unit. The name itself says control unit. Control unit means whatever the instructions or operations that CPU receives. All these operations are controlled by control unit. Next one is arithmetic and logical unit. Data processing tasks are handled by arithmetic and logical unit. As I already said before, performing arithmetic and logical operations on data in order to convert them into useful information. That is nothing but processing data. Data processing tasks such as performing arithmetical calculations and logical operations are handled by arithmetic and logical unit. And last one is memory unit. Whatever the input that user provide to the system, this input is stored in memory unit and as well as output is stored in memory unit. For example, if I give input like 1 plus 2, then this input 1 plus 2 is stored in memory unit and I will get output as 3. This result 3 is stored in this memory unit. Next, I will explain types of memory. Memory is very important for each and every system because if we don't have memory in our system, then we cannot perform even single task in our system. 
so memory is very essential for each and every system computer system contains two types of memory one is primary memory and next one is secondary memory at first i will explain what is primary memory there are two types of primary memory one is random access memory and next one is read only memory at first i will explain what is ram ram stands for random access memory this ram is temporary storage that is whatever the data that is present inside ram once we shut down our system then all this data will be lost so we call this ram as temporary storage there are two types of ram one is static ram and next one is dynamic ram at first i will explain what is static ram shortly we call this static ram as s ram in static ram data is present until we shut down our system and next one is dynamic ram in dynamic ram data is stored in our system very short time even though if we do not shut down our system within short time our data will be lost in dynamic ram this static ram is very costly when compared to dynamic ram and this static ram consume more power when compared to dynamic ram next i will explain rom rom stands for read only memory this is permanent storage because even though we shut down our system then data will be present in our system so we call this rom as permanent storage there are three types of rom first one is prom where prom stands for programmable read only memory in programmable read only memory once we copy any data in prom then we cannot delete that data and next one is eprom where eprom stands for erasable programmable read only memory name itself says erasable mean once we insert any data in eprom we can delete that data and then we can insert new data and next one is electrically erasable programmable read only memory shortly we call it as eeprom in electrically erasable programmable read only memory we can delete data by using electric waves by using special electrical waves we can delete data within milliseconds in eeprom next i will explain secondary memory we also call this secondary memory as external memory example of secondary memory are cds dvds pen drives floppy disks all these are examples of secondary memory next i will explain computer languages computer languages are classified into three types first one is machine level language second one is assembly language and third one is high level language at first i will explain what is machine level language language which is understandable only by machines is known as machine level language we also call this machine level language as low level language Generally, this language is in the form of zeros and ones, so this is not understandable by users. This language is understandable only by machines, and this language was introduced in 1940s. In olden days, that is in 1940s, system understand only machine level language, that is machine can understand only zeros and ones. And second one is assembly language, language which uses some symbols in order to write program is known as assembly language. Generally, this language uses symbols. so we call this language as symbolic language and this language was introduced in 1950s third one is high level language language which is understandable by users is known as high level language generally this language is in the form of english language language which is understandable by users is known as high level language and language which is understandable by machines is known as machine level language or low level language what the c program that i written this c program is in high level language that is in english language so computer cannot understand this high level language so in order to convert this high level language into machine understandable language that is into low level language we need translator the name itself says translator that mean it will translate high level language into low level language there are two types of translators one is compiler and next one is interpreter in c we use compiler that mean for example i open turbo c++ and i written program in turbo c++ and then i will click on alt f9 whenever you click on alt f9 that mean you are compiling your program whenever you click on alt f9 this compiler will convert this high level language program into low level language that is in the form of zeros and ones so this is use of compiler next one is interpreter interpreter also convert high level language into low level language we use this interpreter in java difference between compiler and interpreter is compiler will convert entire program into low level language at a time but whereas interpreter will take one line and then it will convert this line into low level language after compiling this line into low level language only after that it will go to next line and then again it will convert this line into low level language after that it will go to third line so on i will explain what is operating system for example if any user want to access any hardware components then definitely you need one operating system in order to access those hardware components so this operating system act as interface between user and hardware components example of operating systems are windows xp windows 10 linux all these are examples of operating system so if any user want to access hardware components then definitely you need one 
operating system in order to access those hardware components for example if you want to access any software like ms office or photoshop or notepad or any games then definitely you need one operating system in order to access those software this diagram for example users want to access any software like system software or application software this both are present in operating system and this operating system is connected to hardware and this hardware contains cpu or ram or any input and output devices this is diagram these are some of the important functions of any operating systems first one is memory management by using operating system we can perform memory management and next we can also perform processor management device management file management and this operating system also provides security and this operating system is also used to control system performance these are various functions provided by operating system these are various types of operating systems at first i will explain what is batch operating system the name itself says batch batch means group of people for example if there are some users perform similar type of job then whatever the users that perform similar type of job is grouped into one batch for example let us consider three users user one user two and user three these three users perform similar type of job. So these three users are grouped into one batch. In olden days, users write program in punch cards. For example, these three users will write some programs in punch cards and then they will submit these punch cards to computer operator so that this computer operator will insert these punch cards into system. So in batch operating system, users cannot directly interact with computer they will just submit punch cards to computer operator and then this computer operator will insert this punch cards into this system and then he will perform his task. This is known as batch operating system. What is multitasking or time sharing operating system? For example, let us consider there are different users located in different places and these users want to access same computer at a time. All these users can access this single computer at a time by using internet and this is considered as time sharing operating system. I will explain what is real time operating system. This real time operating systems will give response within short period of time. Military software system, space software system, all these are examples of real time operating system. If there is any crime or any bomb blast, then this military operating systems will give immediate response. And similarly, if there are any changes in space, then immediately we will get response by using space software systems. These both are examples of real time operating system. Next, what is mobile operating system? Operating system which is designed especially for mobile is known as mobile operating system. Example, Android, iOS, all these are examples of mobile operating systems because they are especially designed for mobiles. Next, I will explain what is network operating system. This network operating system runs on server. Every software company contains server and this server contains network operating system and this network operating system has capability to manage data, manage users and also it will provide security and other networking functions. This is use of network operating system. Next I will explain what is distributed operating system. Normally every computer contains only one CPU but whereas in distributed operating system it contains multiple process processor is nothing but we call cpu as processor so distributed operating system uses different processors so that these systems are very fast when compared to other systems 